have a strong relationship with him, that firm foundation, that marriage is going to, it's going to fall. It's going to fall. Because our foundation with him have to be firm first. If we don't have a firm foundation with him, what, 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 when me and my husband was looking for a house, most of the houses we looked at had bad, bad foundation. So we had to keep looking until we found the right house. Our marriage, the same, a firm foundation. It, 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 it can't be, it can't be leaning this way. It can't be shaking. It can't be all over the place. Your marriage have to be on a firm foundation. A firm foundation. And who is our firm foundation? Our rock. <laughs> our chief cornerstone. It's him. It's him that's going to keep our marriage in place. It's him that's going to keep our marriage on the right path. It's him. We got to let him do it. My second point, your life, your marriage, raising a family, building a home, establishing a career must have God as the foundation or it will crumble. It will crumble. Without Christ, we have no foundation. He is our foundation. And we all know the scripture, folks, 1 Corinthians 3.11, for no other foundation can any one lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ himself. It's him. We done said it a thousand times. It's no way around him. No way around him. If our life have to be built on him, our, of course our marriage have to be built on him. It's no way around him. We have so many scriptures on the foundation coming from our apostle, Mama Abram, Brother Terrence, when he teach on marriage, we all getting taught the word of God. We know better now. I had a worldly marriage. I know he didn't line up with the word of God because it was all about me, me, my, what I want, what I'm going to do, what I ain't going to do, what you going to do, and what you ain't going to do. Oh, you can get out of my house. I'm going to pack your bag and, 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 and where it's going to be your clothes in a plastic bag with some bleach in it. Get on out of my house. That's a worldly marriage. We all been there. But we learn it. God, word, the right way. I'm learning now. I'm learning now. Birdie Dean, I'm learning now. I have, I, I, I have always not been here. Ask mama. I'm calling her, crying. I can't run because God put this together. If I, if I would have ran, that wouldn't have been on God. That would have been on me. I would have missed my blessing. I would have missed what he had for me. I wouldn't be here right now, right today, if I would have ran, if I would have gave up on him. I pray for this. He blessed me with it. What am I wrong for? He is our chief cornerstone, the rock on which we stand. Our relationship with him have to be built on a strong foundation. Have to be. The foundation of our marriage will fall if we're not on him. We have to be rooted and grounded in him. If our lives are meant to be founded on Jesus Christ, then certainly our marriage should be rooted and grounded in him. Him. We have to put the work in. My marriage is where it's at today because I put the work in. You have to put the work in. Your marriage is not going to change on its own. We have to renew our mind. We have to let the word of God inside of us to change us. The word is designed to change us from the inside out. But we have to be a willing vessel. I put the work in. Work in because I, this is where God placed me. I had the wrong attitude coming into this marriage. You know, you bring baggage from your previous marriage into your new marriage that has nothing to do with the word of God. Nothing. Nothing, mama. We bring all that baggage. I did it, mama. Stank attitude, wrong mindset. 
that's not of God, but I learn better. So I'm, 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 I'm working on my marriage. You know, apostle always asks us, what we are on a scale from one to 10? We always seems to be seven and eight and nine. But we're not, because if we still get mad at the word of God, we're not mature. Perfect means to be mature. So if we still get mad at the word of God, not working. And I was getting mad at the word of God. My husband was only telling me what thus says the Lord, and I was getting mad about it. I can't say I'm now at a four because I'm putting the work in, mama. I'm putting the work in. I now have peace in my marriage. I have peace. I have peace. I always mess with my husband about I got papers on him. I got papers on him. Because I'm now able to love him with the love of God that he loved me with. So I changed my life. I'm able to love him with the, with the love of God. So yes, I got papers on you. Got it in the trunk, in the trunk, everywhere. He messed with me. Tell me I got it on 300 hours, 400 hours, 200 hours in my house. It didn't work. I was messing with him this morning, Mom. I'm like, you, 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 you going to church like that without me? He looked nice in his jeans. And you going to church without me like that? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
Finally, God words in with the most important wedding. Revelation 21 and 9. The marriage of Christ to his imperfect but redeemed bride, the church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The wife of the lamb. God knows we're not perfect. We have to strive to become perfect, which is mature. We have to grow up in the word of God. That's what his word does. It grows up. I'm not the same person I was when I first came into the marriage. She gone. She dead, mama. She gone. That's think where the attitude is gone. I no longer have an attitude with my hood. And if it comes up, I know how to put it back down. Hallelujah. And let us go on and enjoy out the rest of our day. Instead of me sitting there looking crazy, cross-eyed and mad, and my hood ain't did nothing to me. But I'm mad because I let the flesh rise up. And not understanding God's word, but I understand his word now. I don't just understand it. I apply it, you guys. I'll apply it. That's why it's working in my life. I listen now. I listen to what he tells me. Because he ain't telling me nothing wrong. I had that message that you think you know everything. That was me. I told my husband that. That hurt my feelings, y'all. When God reminds me of that. That really hurts my feelings. That's why I tell my husband all the time, I apologize, babe. I apologize. I really do. Because that's hurting. That's hurting when you the, the one that you love tell you something like that. And he only telling you what the word of God says. But me not knowing no better. That's why I thank God for my change. My change and what he doing in me. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. So it's all about sowing a good seed into a good ground. My husband kept sowing, sowing, sowing. So guess what I get to do now? Sow back. I get to sow back into a good ground. Not no bad attitude, but the attitude of Christ. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. If we don't let God have his way, how would our marriage get better? It won't, mama. It won't. It won't get better. And y'all remember the love and respect book that we was reading? Wives won't love, husbands won't respect. We have to respect our husbands. Instead of popping out at the mouth, getting smart, catching the attitude, that's not respect. That's not respect. And I did that, mom. I had an ugly spirit on me. That was not of God. But he continued to love and love and love and love on me. Kept loving on me. Kept sowing no loving seed. You can't tell me God's love won't change you. You can't tell me that, mom. Because it will. It will, mom. God's love will change you. And I'm thanking God for my change. I'm thank, I thank God really for my change. Oh, I thank God. We, we wives are made to be loved. Our husbands are made to be respected. That led me to Ephesians 5 and 20. And it says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Why submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as church is Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be their own husband in everything. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. One thing I can say about my husband, he constantly do things, it, no matter how big or small it is. He constantly do things for me, Mom. Knowing I've been at work all day, he might have cooked. He might have cleaned up the kitchen. He might have did clean, wash, or something like that. He, he, he just constantly do stuff. I can't say he's not doing anything because he is. He doing his part. He was like, babe, I did this, so when you come home, you won't have to do it. So he continued to sow in those good seeds. Continue to sow on those good seeds. Continue to sow on those good seeds, which he's, if you say submit to your husband, and like I said, wives wants to be loved, husband wants to be respected. If you're not going to respect your husband, don't expect him to do anything for you. If we got a bad attitude towards our husband, but we want him to go all out the way and do all this and climb the mountains and do everything for us, but we're not doing our part. We have a part to play also in a marriage. I all heard worldly people always say it's 50-50 in a marriage. No, it's 100 -100. It go both ways. It go both ways. Don't expect a husband to do so much and you do nothing. It don't work like that. Not a godly marriage, Tam. But we learn all the wrong ways from worldly people, worldly marriage. A worldly person can not tell you nothing about a marriage. Nothing. Tell you how to jack it up and have your foundation leaning like this. About to fall. That's the only thing they can tell you. Wives are made to love, want love, and expect love. Husbands are made to be respected, want respect, and accept, expect respect. The base fundamental of a strong marriage are simple commitment, love, respect with both husband and wife. Fully surrender to Jesus Christ. Marriage is one of the greatest gifts God ever gave to humans. But it is truly beautiful when you is operating like God intended it to be. According to his word. Not what we want to do. Not what the world says do. But what his word says. What his word says. We are learning that now. We have no excuse. We learning that at Kingdom Faith. We are learning that. God planned. He created marriage with something more and more wonderful in mind. He designed marriage to accomplish a very important goal, to help us become more like his son, Jesus Christ. A great marriage is the outcome of becoming Christ-like. How do we do that? Jesus Christ himself gives us the answer in John 13, 34 and 35. And it reads, I am giving you a new commandment, that you love one another Amen. just as I have loved you. So you too are to love one another. But this, everyone, by this, everyone would know that you are my disciple if you have love and unselfish concern for one another. In a marriage, you cannot be selfish. It is not about you. Can't. It is not about you. Not about you at all. Love is action. Love is not selfish. Jesus said that our Christ like love will show us that we are disciples in our marriage. We are disciples, Mama. We are disciples. Yes. It continues. It don't stop. So if we're not showing Christ-like love in our marriage, it, is, it will be division. Division, pettiness, bickerness, jealousy, attitude. We bring all these things into our marriage. Yeah. All of them. And it's not Christ-like. Yep. Yep. For 
our divorce? Have we not so long, Christ? Have we not? Because Christ don't have an attitude. Christ is not selfish. Because he was, he would have never went to that cross. He is love all day long. He love. We have to continue to love on each other with the love of God. The same love he loved with me, I have to love my husband with. I have to love you guys with. I have to love you with the same love. Because God love don't change it. It don't change. It never runs out. At all. It stains. All of it. So in my closing, you guys, I'm going to leave you with this. Jesus tells us what marriage is. It is between one man and one woman. And they are to be one flesh. Sexually, spiritually, emotionally, financially, and ownership when making a decision in one goal. To serve the Lord in one home. God joins a husband and a wife in one flesh, and nothing shall separate what God has joined it together. Genesis 2 and 24 tells us that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. One. A marriage together as one has to have the right foundation and live out in word and deed. God wants marriage to be strong. He wants them to last. He wants them to be built on the right foundation and living out the right fundamental. The Lord is the foundation upon which a strong marriage is to be built. A strong lasting marriage must be based on a relationship with God. We must surrender our lives and our marriage to Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, to build on the bedrock of a strong and serious relationship with the Lord. Thank you and be blessed.